Hey, what's going on guys? It's JC here from Motion VFX, and today we're going through the brand new pack for DaVinci Resolve, M Callouts Clean. This is a collection designed to draw attention to details and take your typography to a whole new level. Let's dive into it. So once you've installed the M Callouts Clean from the installer, you'll want to head over to the Effects tab and search that in. Here is where you'll find 30 different callouts. Unlike regular titles, these callouts are actually in the effects tab and work on a drag and drop basis where you'll drag them onto the footage opposed to the timeline. However, what I'd recommend instead is dragging your callout onto an adjustment layer opposed to the clip. As you can see, if I was to drag this onto the clip, you'll see the callout comes in all good. Now this is great, but if I want the callout to come on a little bit later inside the clip, I don't really have control of that. So instead, I'll go ahead and delete this. I'll grab an adjustment layer from the effects tab place that here then dragging that same call out on I now have that same control and this means I can drag the adjustment layout wherever I want make it shorter or longer and I have that full control so just before we get started with the overview I do recommend hovering over all 30 of the call outs to familiarize yourself with the various different looks then to kick things off since I already have my adjustment clip here I'm just going to make this the full length of the footage that I'm going to drag on so to begin adjusting this, we'll head into the Inspector tab on the right. And the first thing you want to do if you're working on a 4K timeline is hit this 4K quality box. This ensures that the sizing and the quality is correct. Next, we have these in and out points, and they're going to control the animation when the layer starts and ends. So before going through all these different tabs, which are very simple, by the way, I actually want to go through the tracking process. So to get that process started, we'll have to click this wand here that takes us over to the Fusion page. Now don't be alarmed if this is your first time in Fusion land because it's very basic and easy to use. So here we have the main three nodes. So I'll just drag them in the middle, space them out a bit. And the first thing we want to do is get a tracker node because for this callout to really work, we want it not to just be sat in the middle of the screen, but to be tracked to the subject we're pointing attention to. So to do that with the first node selected, you want to hit shift space bar and then search tracker. Once we have that node in place, it should land in between the media in and the callouts. We're just going to hit one so we can get the source footage on the left. And with DaVinci Resolve and Teletrack, this process is really simple. So we'll highlight the image of the box and we'll just find the point where we want to track. Then once we've selected the point we want to track, we'll head over in the inspector tab and hit this double arrow. This is now going to go backwards and forwards, tracking every frame. So in this timeline, you should see all the various white lines. And if there's a section that doesn't have any white lines, that means that area is not tracked. From here, you'll select the callouts node, head into the callout controls. Then under center point, you're going to right click, connect to, tracker one and teletrack path position. Now don't be alarmed, nothing has gone wrong. The reason why we can't see anything is because we are at the beginning of the frame. So it hasn't quite animated in yet. If I was to toggle this off, you can see it is there. So I'll just go later on in the frame. And there we have it. We can see as I kind of scrub through back and forth, that number two, where the streamline is, is sticking to that position. Now, of course, the composition of this isn't quite ideal because the text is coming out of frame. But that's when we'll now dive into the rest of the options to dial this in. So the first option we do have is the callout mode, whether that's linked or static. And this relates to how the title is going to behave. When it's linked, it means the title is going to move with the tracking and the footage, whereas when it's static, the title remains still in the frame. Now, depending on which mode you've chosen, will determine the different options available. So if you have the linked option selected, the static point settings won't work. Whereas if you have the statics option selected, the link points won't work. So currently, whilst we have it on linked, the title is definitely in the wrong place. So what I'll do is change the angle, moving this out to the right. I'll then just increase the distance. You put this about there. Yep, looks pretty good to me. And now the same thing, if this was static, I could then move this in a similar place using the points here. And there it works all good. We can see the point stays attached to the tracking point and the text remains in that same position. So now that we've got the hard part out of the way, we'll now dive through the rest of the tabs. Starting off with the title controls. So the first thing we do have are the position, scale and title rotation. Now this tab controls the title exclusively. So any changes we make won't affect the line, the point, the two, the circle, anything else in the title. So what I'm going to do is actually give some space between the line and the title. Just changing that there. Scale and the rotation, they're all good for me now. So now I'll go into the title text controls where I can actually manipulate how this title looks. So this is a large radio telescope. And now that I've made that, I'm just going to drop this down a touch. So it's in the middle. Yeah, it's pretty good to me. Let's center the anchor mode and then we'll slide that back. 
all good. So just like your normal text box controls, you can change the font, the colors, the sizing, the spacing, etc. And at the bottom, we do have this tab, which is the bar. Now that's going to allow you to have a background behind the text. For now, I don't think we need it, so I'll just turn that off. And that is your title controls. Next, we have the line controls and very straightforward. You can, you know, just control the line. So we can turn that off if you wanted to. We can increase the thickness here and we can change the colors. So I will just make this line a bit thicker. And instead of using this circle here to drag the thickness, as it's a bit sensitive, I will instead drag on the numbers as you can get a lot of finer adjustments. And if you do want to snap back to default, all you need to do is click on this small circle here, or you can just double click on the option name and it will snap back. So let's put this at 0 0.0021, looks all good. Next, we have the track point controls. And to go through this, instead of staying on the Fusion tab, where there's a lot of graphics, a lot of lines, a lot of confusion going on, we might as well go back into the Edit tab and continue from there. So the first option we do have is if we actually want the point at all. So we can toggle that off if we do just want the line. I'll keep the point, but I will just adjust it further. We can also offset the position of this, and it will still use the tracking, but the position will just be changed. So if I move this slightly to the right and then play this through, you can see it still tracks in the same way. It's just now slightly to the right of that exact point. Resetting that back, then go into the subtitle controls. Now this is going to control the text inside the dot. In this scenario, I don't need the text, so I will just untick the subtitle. But if I did want that, we do have all these controls the same as before. Next, we have the actual dot controls. Again, toggling that on and off so you can see what that's doing. I'll just scale this down. And then I might change this to a nice, let's go for an orange. And the last tab we have is the drop shadow controls, which is just going to allow your call out to stand out on a brighter background. And that's pretty much it. As I said, it may seem scary at first, but it's actually really simple. And the more you use these call outs, the quicker you'll get in this whole process. Now you can just rinse and repeat this method for wherever you'd have a tracking point. But if by chance you'd want to have multiple call outs attached to the same point, let me show you how it's done. You could drag on another adjustment layer and repeat the entire process, but that's not the most effective way. So instead of doing that, and instead of dragging on another call out directly onto this adjustment layer, what we'll do is head back into the Fusion tab. Then from here, we'll go to the Effects tab and find our call outs. We can do that by going through the Templates, the Edit, Effects, Motion View Effects, and the Call Outs tab will be there. Then you'll drag the call out between the current call out you have in the node structure and the media out node. Then head up into the call out controls where we'll do the same process of linking it to that tracking point. Let's go to connect to the tracker one in teletrack path and position. And once you've done that, you're good to customize just like before. One thing to consider when you are adding the call outs in this method, because you've placed the call out via the fusion page, when you go back to the edit page, the options won't appear. So I'll just change this angle. Increase the distance slightly. Let's put it about there. In the titles, I'll just change this to, let's put the cost. Let's say this telescope is around 50 million. And now I'll just slide this title slightly closer to the line. And there we have it. Two call outs tracked to the exact same point in a matter of minutes. Now that is pretty much all you need to know to use the call outs, but there are a few that do have extra options. So let's go through those. So I have my adjustment clip here ready for another call out. And what I'm actually going to do is duplicate this because I want to use multiple call outs. And then I'll just adjust the timing so I can have these call outs come in in a staggered fashion. So that style looks pretty good to me. So we'll first get the first call out, which I'm going to do more of a location. This is a clip in Death Valley. So I'll just put that in. So that's entered in. And then this currently doesn't have a line selected, but I will just add that in. Then I'll just make all the adjustments before tracking it. So it's in a rough place of where I'd like it. About there, it's good to me. So now we've got that sorted. I'll go into the Fusion tab and then we'll just repeat the same steps as before. So I'll select Media In, find my tracking node. Hit one with that pressed. Find the point where I want to track. So let's go. Let's go on top of this hill here. Sure. And then we'll track that backwards, forwards. Cool. Next, go to the call outs, right click in the call outs, connect to tracker one and tether track path one position. And that's it. Just like I said, the more you do this, the quicker you get. So that's step one done. And then on the next call out, I want to indicate the girl we have running here. So for this, I'm actually going to use a call out that uses a drop zone. So go call out 24. 
Then you can see we have this section, which is the drop zone, and that indicates where you can put an image in from your machine. So I'll go into the title controls, drop zone, then if you hit browse, you can then go through your files on your machine and find the image you want to use. So I've put that there. We'll change the title. So we have a brand and name. Let's call her Hannah Taylor. And instead of a tech YouTuber, see it's a travel influencer. Now we'll repeat that process of going to track this. And now I'll place this right on our subject, hit track. And then I will just link that center point to the tracking path. Now I am going to adjust is this track point we have here is clearly too big. So I'll just drop the size of that. Let's go up there. And then I will just increase the distance touch and add a slight drop shadow. And there we have a finished result. So remember, trial and error with these things is really the best way to learn. The more you do this, the quicker and more efficient it'll be every time. So I hope this overview has been helpful for you to better understand how to use the callouts. Remember, if you have any questions at all or want to take a look at the other callout packs, head to the website at motionoftheeffects.com. I've been JC, and this has been your M Callouts Clean Overview for DaVinci Resolve. See you in the next one.